Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll take a next step in our journey to understanding electric fields. This time, focusing on the electric field of a capacitor, which is a fundamental element in electronics. But first, let's do a quick recap. Previously, we calculated the electric field produced by a disk of charge, the disk with a uniform surface charge distribution, and at a point very close to the disk. The electric field is approximately constant and behaves like the field of an infinite sheet of charge. As a general rule, you can always think that very near the charge surface, the electric field lines are perpendicular to the surface. When you get very close to the surface of the disk, the distance from any given point on the disk becomes so small that the curvature of the disk is negligible. In this situation, the electric field is almost uniform and can be approximated as one half of sigma naught epsilon naught, where sigma is the surface charge density and epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. This formula is for the field produced by a single disk. Now let's take things a step further. What happens if we place two parallel plates near each other, one with a positive charge plus Q and the other with a negative charge minus Q? Each plate can be thought of as a large disk of charge, but now, instead of a single disk, we have two of them facing each other. The positive plate has a surface charge density plus sigma, and the negative plate has minus sigma. The key idea here is that the electric field lines from these two plates combine to create the overall field between them. Let's look at how these electric fields combine. Its plate generates an electric field perpendicular to its surface. The positive plate creates a field pointing away from its surface, and the negative plate creates a field pointing towards its surface. Inside the region between the plates, these two electric fields act together. Because they point in the same direction, from the positive plate toward the negative plate, Let's now calculate the total electric field between the plates. We know from our earlier work with a single disk of charge that the electric field close to a uniformly charged plate is one half sigma epsilon naught. But now, since we have two plates contributing to the field, we need to add the fields from both the positive and negative plates. The field from the positive plate points to the right, and the field from the negative plate also point to the right. So the total electric field between the plates is sigma epsilon naught. Outside of the plates, the electric field lines from each plate point in opposite directions and have the same magnitude, so they cancel each other. This result tells us that the electric field between the plates is uniform and directed from the positive charged plate to the negative charged plate. Unlike the field near the single plate, where the field weakens as you move away from the plate, the field between these two plates remains constant. This uniformity is a key feature of the parallel plate capacitor. It allows the capacitor to store energy efficiently in the electric field between the plates. It is worth noting that this calculation assumes we are dealing with ideal plates that are infinitely large in real capacitors, the electric field is not perfectly uniform near the edges. This phenomenon is called the edge effect. However, as long as the plates are much larger than the distance between them, the edge effects are minimal and we can safely use our result for most practical purposes. These results are valid assuming that there is a vacuum between both plates. If there are any material inside, any medium, like a dielectric, then this epsilon naught, well, there's a term that we need to multiply here, but we'll talk about that later in this course. To summarize, we've gone from understanding the electric field of a single disk of charge to calculating the uniform electric field between two charged plates, which is a parallel plate capacitor. The total electric field between the plates is directly proportional to the surface charge density and it's uniform across the entire region between the plates. 
This uniform fill allows capacitors to store energy efficiently, making them essential components in electronic circuits. Well, thanks for watching and may science be with you.